will come to order. Uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Secretary, will you please uh, take the roll? Chairman Bray is present. Vice Chairman Barnes is present. Commissioner Kish is present. Commissioner Keyes is present. Commissioner Maloney is present. Commissioner Walters is present. Commissioner Steiner is present. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Uh, on to agenda item number four is the minutes from the September 12, 2018 uh, meeting. Uh, those are uh, there on your iPad. And once you review those, I will take a motion, please. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the meeting uh, no, uh, minutes from September 25th. I second. It has been um, moved by Commissioner Kish. Was that Commissioner Maloney or Keys? Maloney? Mm -hmm. Commissioner Maloney seconded. Um, is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, agenda item number five is a call uh, public comments. Uh, this is the time uh, for citizens who would like to address the Planning and Zoning Commission on any non-agenda items. Uh, does anyone from the audience wish to speak on any non-agenda items at this time? Are there any speaker cards? All right. Moving on to agenda item number six. This is disclosure of ex parte communication. This is the opportunity for any commissioner member to disclose any ex parte communication they may have had prior to this meeting. Commissioners? No, none. Thank you. Uh, there is uh, one agenda. Okay, so do we have old business or no old business? My script says old business, but the agenda says no old business, right? No old business. We're going to go right into new business. Okay. Uh, the new business then, agenda item um, 8.1. This is a use permit request that the convenience use drive through restaurant on property zone planned area and development general commercial. Karen? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, commissioners. The drive through restaurant under consideration tonight is a Culver's. Yeah. Hey. Um, the subject property is 1.7 acres. It's on the west side of Australia, south of Van Buren, and kitty corner from the new Dunkin' Donuts. It is also within the approved Hudson Commons mixed use development. As I think you'll recall, Hudson Commons had a, a section of single family homes, multi family homes, and of course the commercial. And Culver's will be right here at this pad at a uh, existing full medium break in Australia Parkway. This is their site plan. The access to the parcel will be internal off of these two drives that come in to serve Hudson Commons. And from there, you can get into the parking lot where there are 64 parking spaces, or you can come in here and go through the drive-through. And those two drives, of course, of our, are off of Estrella Parkway. Uh, there will be, within the building, there will be an approximately 2,400 square foot dining area, as well as a 1,000 square foot outdoor patio area. Very nice landscaping plan. You can see that they have extensive buffering along Estrella Parkway that will also serve to buffer the drive-through lane around the restaurants. These are their elevations. It's a stucco base with accent stone, brick, and metal, as well as a roll-up ultraviolet shading shades around the outdoor patio area. This is the main entry to the restaurant, which faces south. This is what faces Estrella Parkway. This is faces north, 
And here's the drive through window here. And then this is what faces the interior of the Hudson Commons Center. Uh, the request meets all the ev evaluation criteria for the issuance of a use permit, and in particular for a convenience use for the drive-through. And staff is recommending approval of the use permit, and we ask that you do so as well, subject to the stipulations in the staff report. Thank you. Is there any questions for staff? None. Is the applicant... Tonight. The applicant is here tonight and I believe has a few words for you and will answer any questions you may have of him. Okay. Does the applicant wish to address the council? Okay. Uh, for the record, your name and address, please. Uh, my name is Scott Odia. Uh, my home address or your business address, business address uh, 2141 East Highland Avenue in Phoenix, Suite 275. Bogart Wilson. And uh, so, Karen, thank you very much. You basically said everything uh, that we really need to say to describe the site. I am here on behalf of Greg Landon, the franchisee for Culver's. So uh, he right now is in Wisconsin. So I would be happy to address any uh, questions that you have. Any questions for the applicant? No. Nope. Thank you. Appreciate you coming out. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, all right. Is there any um, speaker cards or any comments from the public? All right. Seeing none, we will uh, move on. Uh, we'll close the public hearing. And is there uh, a motion for agenda item 8.1? Mr. Chairman, I move that the commission approve case number 18-300-300. 00006, subject to the stipulations in the staff report. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Walters, seconded by Commissioner Steiner to approve the use permit request for convenience drive through restaurant. Uh, is there any discussion? No. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Agenda item 8.2 is uh, the La Privada rezone. I will open uh, the public uh, hearing on that and Katie's going to present. Thank you, Chairman. Members of the commission, I am presenting on behalf of Alex Listinski this evening. Oh, okay. Um, so this is a proposal to rezone a development in West Goodyear known as La, La Privada. It's approximately 193 acres. It's located east of Perryville Road and north of Yuma Road. It, um, there is, let's see, county land with residents located to the north and east of the development. There's planned residential to the, another portion of the north and south, which is um, planned but not developed, and then another um, area that's within the county adjacent. The current zoning is PAD with underlying R16 and R17 zoning, which would allow for 60 foot, 70 foot wide lots. And as you can see on this map, it's made up of about five um, parcels or phases that they're each about 40 acres, a little less than 40 acres. And you can see here, so the proposed changes are only on two, and I have a couple maps that show this, so hopefully when I get through all these slides, it'll show it. So this parcel here would remain the same as it is today. Same with this parcel and this parcel, but this one is proposed to go from R16 to R14, and this one on the south would be proposed to go from R16 to R14. So as you can see from the chart, currently there's a total of 578 dwelling units planned, and this would increase by 24 units, so that 602 would be allowed. And then you can see the lot mix changes a little bit, um, adding in that R14 product. And then you can see this, the two with the circle are the two that are um, proposed to change. But um, as you might remember, with the city adopting our new residential standards, along with the changes to the two parcels, 
the whole area is being rezoned from PAD to residential so that we won't need that PAD booklet anymore. So it'll be a little bit easier to administer. So the whole area is being rezoned, but the land use plan changes only affect those two parcels that are circled here. According to those new, new residential standards, in order to get these smaller lot sizes, um, they have to do one amenity element, two connectivity elements, and three streetscape elements. Um, so La Pravada is doing a couple things on the amenity. First, there is a parcel, and I'm having trouble with the mouse, sorry, but um, you can see that park parcel. Um, in Amber Meadows, which is just to the west, there is a school site adjacent to that, and then this is the park site. So there is a proposed joint school park site that would be donated to the school when they need it or could be used by a park if the school for some reason didn't need it. So that also um, that goes above and beyond most developments, so that also counts toward that amenity. But you can see the list of amenities that they're providing. And this map on this slide was provided to you in your materials as well, so you can see it a little better on your materials. On the connectivity, the next slide, you can see there is a trail, and I'm having trouble with this mouse, sorry. There is a trail that runs throughout the property, and that will be a publicly accessible trail. They've also committed to lot diversity that even in that R14, that at least 30% of the lots will be 50 foot wide or bigger. And then they also are providing smaller blocks rather than having long areas that are not broken. They're providing smaller blocks, which provides a more connected, to connect, connected community. Finally, the streetscape elements, they have committed to detached sidewalks, alternative paving, and then as an, altern as an um, additional element, they are doing um, these paver entrance features, which is nice. It, they're located along the road that'll lead to the school, so hopefully it'll help slow down traffic a little bit on the way to the school, um, and then it, it just provides a nice community streetscape feature. Notice was sent to um, property owners within 500 feet of the area. There was a citizen neighborhood, citizen review or neighborhood meeting held on June 6. About 15 residents attended. There were many questions and concerns noted, um, mostly surrounding um, concerns with having smaller lots and adding lots to the plan. Um, and there was a summary of those comments provided to you. There have been no written objections or additional objections um, given to the city to date. The city in our review has found that the proposal meets the general plan and all other codes and ordinances and therefore staff recommends approval. Um, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Does any, are there any questions for Katie at this time? Yes, Commissioner Walter. Katie, thank you for the presentation. In the neighborhood meeting notes that you provided to us um, prior to the meeting, I noticed that there were some references in there to disclosures that will be made to future La Pravada home purchasers, specifically the dust concerns and animal complaints. Is that part of, if we were to approve this, are those requirements for the disclosure part of what we would be voting on? My concern is wanting to make sure that these representations are captured and what, exactly what we're voting on. Thank you, um, Chairman, Commissioner Walters, and I'm just looking through the stipulations. Um, there is a general requirement that it be disclosed or, um, that La Pravada is in close proximity to agricultural uses and may therefore be subject to noise, dust, odors and association and, and odors associated with such uses. That's the exact language. So if the commission um, would recommend different language or more specific language, that would need to be um, proposed to be added as a stipulation. Thank you for clarifying that. Any further questions? Uh, also in the neighborhood meeting notes, Katie, there's a reference to neighborhood concerns about um, 
lots adjacent to 181st Avenue be considered for strike that there's a reference to single story homes against um, there it is the white tank mountain views can you show me uh, or dial me in on where we're talking about thank you and you know what I may just because this isn't my case I may need help from the applicant but it's I believe said, this is 101st 181st Avenue over here yeah it's set, it references adjacent to the channel mm -hmm. Yeah, so this, and this is the alignment. So it's the furthest eastern edge. All the way north the to south, the residents were concerned about um, multi-story homes there? Yes, um, there, it, it sounds like there was um, questions or suggestions that those homes be limited to one story. There is no stipulation requiring a limit to the number of stories. The um, typical city there's no policy that requires preservation of views and that's not typically something that the city takes responsibility for um, as long as the proposed heights are in um, are similar in character to the heights of nearby residences that's what the city would review and the heights for this district is um, similar to that that's allowed under the county zoning thank you Katie any further questions for staff you said the applicant is here? The applicant is here. Does the applicant wish to address the commission? Name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Hugo Blanco. I'm with Malcor Developments. And our address is 6930 East Chauncey Lane, Suite 135 in Phoenix, Arizona, 85054. And I have with me a uh, project manager for La Privada as well, uh, Rick Don from Rick Engineering. Okay, so I'm gonna be pretty much just touching base on a lot of what Katie already covered. Thank you so much, Katie. Um, let's see, I see. Okay, perfect. All right, well, first of all, thank you guys for the opportunity tonight. Um, today, and this is just a quick overview of uh, La Privada, um, roughly 200 acres um, east of uh, Perryville, north of uh, Yuma Road. Um, we are um, overall getting, we are uh, looking to rezone, uh, re uh, removing the PAD and uh, rezoning parcels. Uh, parcel one and two will remain R17. Uh, parcels three and uh, five uh, will be R14 and parcels four will be R16. Uh, and pretty much um, like uh, Katie mentioned, we're just uh, looking to bring uh, diversification to the community. Uh, and I feel that uh, the market's asking for uh, first time home buyer uh, product and also first time uh, move up um, home buyer product. And uh, we feel by um, zoning this and getting it rezoned, uh, we'll, we'll provide that uh, to that community along with uh, our already final approved PASEL 1 and PASEL 2. Um, excuse me. And this is uh, just an enhanced conceptual landscape plan of what uh, the lot layout will be looking like uh, along with uh, some of the amenities, which uh, in further slides we'll be going into a little bit more. Uh, uh, we'll be zooming in a little bit more and, and discussing those as well. Um, let's see here, parcel 1. Uh, this is where uh, the dog dog park will be fenced in dog park along with uh, Ramada um, G BG trail which is a decomposed granite trail um, it eliminates uh, the dust and anything like that along with uh, play structures uh, barbecues uh, and those uh, those sweet amenities there uh, parcel two uh, which is a little bit uh, let's see uh, parcel two uh, will be having a full-size basketball court uh, along with the sand volleyball uh, another thing that we're super excited about this uh, and introducing is uh, amphitheater uh, feature, uh, which uh, allows for um, a social aspect of the community, uh, can bring everyone together and um, kind of just for events, uh, more for kids. Uh, we've seen them used as uh, movie, night, uh, movie nights. Uh, we see uh, anything from like Thanksgiving, Halloween, uh, they can be used for that aspect, uh, which those would be pretty sweet. Um, 
and then also uh, additional uh, recreational space here that can be used. Uh, uh, parcel three here, uh, we have recreational space that can be used for uh, kids practices. Um, and, and that's uh, another good aspect that we decided to add on to that uh, along with Ramada. Uh, let's see, parcel four, another amphitheater feature uh, along with play structures, Ramadas, barbecues. And five has a uh, half basketball court, ramadas, uh, play structures, and additional open space for uh, recreational uh, events and, and use. Um, so with that. I was going to say, and if you don't mind, no, no, go for I'll, it. I'll, let me add a few things. So uh, we've been working with Melcor probably about four or five years now. And when they bought the Paseo projects and they've kind of brought those forwards, they had an opportunity. Uh, the West Goodyear area has been trying to get moving for some period of time. And so it made a lot of sense for them to add this to the, it makes it a lot easier to move some of those crow options forward, get the infrastructure built out there. And these plans had already previously been approved. Uh, they were final, but they had lapsed. And so uh, one of the things that Melcor did is they had commissioned a study uh, to see if they had added that diversification. And what they found was that by adding that, they could sell the project out in four years instead of extending it over eight or 10 years by having that ability to do it. So it, it certainly shortens the construction line. So with that in mind, what we did is we reconfigured the open space so that it really made the connectivity because we really think that certainly healthier communities really make a big difference. You really want people to be able to bike and walk and take advantage of that. So my background is actually, I'm an urban planner but probably 90% of what I do is actually engineering. So I kind of am, kind of can do both sides of it. So does it really work? Does it really make sense? So one of the things we wanted to do was make the connection. So we, in parcel three, can we go back here a little bit? We can just show the overall landscape in one. <clears throat> so it was originally approved with that emergency conveyance channel. As you know, they have a lot of trouble with water out there and they're trying to come up with a regional solution with the flooding that's out there. So it's about 950 CFS that down through there. We increased a buffer zone uh, along that trail and we put a pedestrian path in kind of right on the west side of the channel there where previously the lots were right up against it. Mm -hmm. So that adds an additional buffer area within there. Uh, and then we made it so that you have this trail system that interconnects all the way up through the whole community in multiple places. And it also ties into the County Maricopa Trail, which is dedicated along Yuma Road. We had to make that, a, we had that as a component for both uh, Paseo Place Parcel 1 and Paseo Place Parcel 2. So we tried to look at it holistically. How can these trails interconnect and how can we make it so that it's a better overall community? We want people to have it be a sense of place when they come home, not where they just come into their garages and close the door and go into their backyard. It was really important to us to make sure that it was creating a lifestyle for that. And I, and I would speak to some of your concerns about the buffer zone and the, the, mount, and the Australian mountains. So I actually did a, did kind of a measurement of how far it is from the residents and we've, we've increased it. If you were to have from their property line to the backyard, uh, it's 165 feet away and the deflection angle between a, a two story at, or one story and a two story is really small. The Australian mountains are over five miles away. So it would, no matter what, what is there, the impact is gonna be really minor. And we wanna be sensitive because I know as somebody who lives in a county island up north, you wanna be sensitive to those neighbors. And I, I think we're really trying to strive for that, which is one of the reasons why we put that trail in there and we made it a public trail. And, and that's, we, we considered it public even before it was stipulated to us to be that way because we want it to be part of the overall community. So. It, if you have some you know, questions about how we came up with some of these concepts, I know that we worked pretty closely with city staff to get those recreation areas. This, I think it might be a slightly older, this might be a slightly older one because we actually worked really closely with them to develop these like soccer field areas because we know that that's been a concern with parks and rec. Uh, and then additionally, this area up in here is a joint use with uh, Amber Meadows. We would prefer it to be a complete park site in there. Uh, there's uh, the Amber Meadows folks still want a school to go in there, but we've had some previous discussions with the school. They feel like they would rather have a monetary contribution, but we'll honor whatever the school wants. So our preference is it'd be so great to have a community park in here, 
it would be a, it would end up being a, I think like a, did you have six acres, right? And they have six acres. So that would be our preference because we think it enhances this community and the neighbors as well. Um, eventually it'll be some kind of combined state. It'd be nice if the whole thing was a park, but we can't dictate based on that. It's really got to be a joint agreement with uh, the developers for Amber Meadows. So I think that maybe expanded a little bit more. Like I said, this, pro this project was approved before. Um, we've at, we have added some more uh, lots, but I think that we've also enhanced the recreation and the amenity areas, not just for the, not just for this community, but in conjunction with Paseo and in conjunction with the people that are going to be living in that community. So, thank you. Um, is there any questions for the applicant at this time? None. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you coming out. Um, at this time, we'll move on to uh, public comment. Um, are there any speakers cards on this one? No. Anybody from the public? Okay, so here's how uh, this is done. You have a card? Perfect. So just come to the mic. We need a name, uh, address. You have three minutes to make your comments, and then just make sure that um, Heather over here uh, gets that, that card so that we can make sure we get the record straight. So with that, welcome. Thank you. My name is Bill Lanier, Jr., and I live on 181st Avenue which is adjacent to where they're going to be placing the subdivision. And some of the concerns that myself and my neighbors have, um, Ms. Walters addressed some of them as far as a nuisance ordinance, because we are, we do have farms there. So there is smell, there is animal feces and everything that's associated with a farm. So we're concerned about that. And also the work hours that will be used um, when they're building the uh, subdivision, what are the work hours going to be and what are they going to do for dust control. And we're also concerned that along 181st Avenue, there's an irrigation ditch there that's open where water flows through. And we're concerned about the safety of any kids that will be living there. And we're wondering if they're going to put a wall on that side of the buffer between our farms and the subdivision for the safety of the kids. And we're also concerned with the lighting, you know, and I believe Goodyear has it so that lighting is supposed to face down and it's not dispersed like it is over in so many other parts of the Phoenix area. And the mountains that we were concerned about are not the Estrellas, but the white tanks, which are directly to the northwest of where we're at. And we are concerned about the views of that. And that's why I appreciate you bringing up the single story part of that because all of our dwellings in there are single story and we have a good view of those those mountains and we like to keep the rural feel so the addition the change from the r6 and the r7 to two r4s is kind of a concern for us for density for the population density and also that bring especially along 181st avenue where they change that one small parcel to an r4 and r14 that kind of you know, we're a little concerned about that as well. And that's all I have for now. Thank you very thank much, you. Council, for hearing me. And thank you again, personally, Ms. Walters, for addressing our concerns earlier on. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, any additional comments? Yes, ma'am. Please come forward. Name and address, and uh, you'll have three minutes, and they'll give you a warning as you get close to your three minutes. Just make sure they turn your slip in uh, to Heather. Nancy Tannenbaum, I live on 181st Avenue also, just down from Bill. Uh, Bill covered uh, quite a bit of what I was wanting to bring up, but the one thing that um, I thought I'd like to bring up too is the water issue, because where we are, we're on wells, okay? And I don't know where they're gonna be getting the water for all these houses that are going in, um, because we don't have city water out there, and it's on wells. and that's where our water comes from and we don't want to lose um, the amount of water that we get, you know, from our wells for all these houses. So, and what he brought up about the R4, uh, changing it to R4 rather than R6, that's a big concern. Um, it, you might not think so, but it really is. And um, 
I understand where the builders are coming from because they get more money that way probably, but that you got to take in consideration of the, um, when you have lower price houses going in, you're going to bring in a different kind of people that may not stay there and it can cause some problems, but that's it. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public at this time? No speakers cards? No other comments from the public? All right. Um, I'll close the public hearing then. Um, and before we go in uh, uh, to uh, <clears throat> discussion and vote, there is just a couple of things that um, I would ask staff to, to cover this and, and hopefully cover some of the concerns that the citizens brought up. So um, first of all, the, the ag concern, which I sympathize with, um, it is clearly stated in city regulation and then in the disclosure for sale property that they are next to agricultural property and everything that comes with it, correct? Yes, yes sir, that's correct. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm sure we have some general regulations and rules on work hours when doing construction concerning times they can start up equipment and service and dust as well. Can you cover that quickly, Christopher? Uh, yes, sir. There is uh, blanket city requirements regarding the what time construction activity can start. It does depend. It does vary depending on the time of year. Obviously, when it's hotter, they start earlier and end earlier in the afternoon. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, well, it, it, it varies. It's like six o'clock, I think, if I remember correctly, in the summer and I, something like that yes i just i'd have to double check i don't remember off the top of my head okay. but there is requirements so if anybody wants those requirements i would suggest seeing staff after uh the meeting for specific requirements um i'm going to go out on a limb here and just say all the dust stuff is covered by maricopa county and their air quality rules yes sir that's all part of the engineering review where those appropriate dust controls have to measures have to be um not only permitted but also inspected on an ongoing basis um, I am not sure if it's a, a, a line ditch or a drainage ditch or what kind of ditch it might be, but I imagine that's covered by the uh, irrigation district that owns the ditch, correct? And is the are you working with them to solve those issues? Quickly, please. Uh, all, all I was going to say is it's actually a private ditch that RID is required to take the tailwater, and they're actually going to pipe the ditch and have delivery, and it's actually to take tailwater, not deliver the tailwater. Okay. So Thank you. They, they are addressing that. Thank you. Uh, lighting ordinances. Yes, sir. So, like street lighting and things of that nature. Uh, this is project in the city, so it's subject to all the normal city requirements for the down lighting and so forth. Mr. Chairman, can I just clarify the um, construction time? Yes, you can, if I may. So, from April fifteenth to October fifteenth, um, between. 5 a.m. and 7 p.m. and from October 16th to April 14th, 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Thank you. Um, and then lastly, I know that the water uh, was brought up and, and the use of wells and um, my guess is that they have to follow all the ADWR requirements and the water will be coming from the city and there probably will be no wells on site. Uh, I don't believe any wells are proposed. The uh, applicant is shaking their head at all the utility services, water and sewer be provided by, by the city itself. So there's public water lines being installed and public sewer lines being installed. Okay, thank you. Um, just wanted to kind of walk through those. I'm not sure it got everything you guys want to cover, but um, hopefully you got some answers. If not, I encourage you to talk to staff afterwards. Um, with that, is there any further questions for staff or the applicant from the commission commissioner walters uh, katie could you please address your thought on the r14 up against the 181st avenue existing properties thank you and if i can i'm just going to borrow the applicants and i'm sorry for clarification on what regard because i know they asked about accessing uh, the or density, the density concern, and I would note, oh, okay. note for the record that this slide is incorrect in referring to 183rd Street. Yes, thank you, Commissioner. So this, as um, we stated before, these two parcels are remaining the same. They can develop 
these two today as they look and there as the applicant stated there was previously a preliminary plot approved this is the exact same plan as was previously planned there's just a few additional units now this again there's between this parcel here and this parcel here there's 24 additional units but the greatest impact to the neighbors might be this row of houses where there's now a and I don't know the exact number, but that now there's a few more homes being proposed along this road. This is the area where the applicant stated it's about 150 feet because of this facility. So the area that's changing is separated most from the county land. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Uh, with that, I will take the uh, motion on agenda item 8.2. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve item number 18-200-0004, La Provada Rezone. I'll second. It has been moved by Commissioner Kish, seconded by Commissioner Barnes to approve the La Provada Rezone. Is there any discussion? Commissioner Walters. Mr. Chairman, I would propose a stipulation that the homes along 100 and, oh gosh, I got to put off the right street. No, that 183rd is wrong. Yeah, okay. 181. Yeah. yeah, it is. Bear with me. I'm going to pull it up so I can say what I want to say. Mr. Chairman, I would propose that a stipulation that the parcel R14, the proposed parcel R14 on the corner of Yuma Road and 104. 81st Avenue that the homes bordering 181st Avenue only in that R14 parcel be single story. Um, okay, so that's a, a, a an amendment to the main motion. Is there a second for Commissioner Walters amendment? I second been uh, seconded by Commissioner Steiner. So the amendment is, is that the uh, parcel um, on Yuma on 181st uh, with an R14 uh, zoning that all homes adjacent to 181st be single story only. That's a proposed amendment subject to discussion. Okay. Chairman, in the meeting notes, if I read them correctly, on uh, it says Melcor cannot guarantee the one-story requirement at this time for those lots. Um, it's in the meeting notes. From the, yes, that's from the, the neighborhood meeting, correct? Right, correct. Okay. Is there any other discussion? No. And we realize that the the amendment is only basically that 40 acres there right because it doesn't it wouldn't we wouldn't require that for the rest of them right i'm the proposed amendment is strictly just that the corner. homes bordering 181st avenue um, in the r14 parcel on the corner of yuma and 181st okay. avenue and i welcome if the applicant wants to address the amendment I just like to say that I actually did kind of a geometric thing where I and I misstated before it's not the street I knew it was the white tanks line but it is five and a half miles away and what I did is I did some mathematical whatever if you're five foot tall and you're looking out through it I think they're blue, the the difference in the view is they're probably going to be subjected uh, whether it's a single story or a two-story to those views so I'm not sure that it necessarily has a significant impact because if two-story house is 20 feet tall and a three-story house is 30 feet tall and the difference geometrically it didn't make any difference they may find even with single story that their views are going to be obscured thank you you're welcome uh any other discussion regarding the amendment um by commissioner walters okay 
Uh, seeing no further discussion, we will take a uh, vote on the amendment by Commissioner Walters on the single story for homes along 181st Avenue. All those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. 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 All, aye. Those, all those opposed say nay. Motion carries. Okay, so now we're back to the original motion for uh, agenda item 8.2. Now we have the approval of uh, the rezone with a new stipulation um, of single story only adjacent to 181st Avenue. Is there any discussion on that? No. no. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed nay. Motion carries. Thank you. And thank you, Chairman. If you don't mind, we might wordsmith. We, we totally understand what you're saying, but we might wordsmith a little bit to add clarity because that parcel does have a name and we can reference that. I think we give you full authority to do that. Okay, <laughs> but the meat of the stipulation will be forwarded <laughs> to council. Uh, and for the residents, thank you for coming out. Um, mm -hmm. If you have further questions at the end of the meeting, staff, I'm sure will be happy to help. Uh, just to let you all know that uh, this is only an advisory board, so uh, City Council will have final say uh, on, on that rezone. So this is just one stop of many. Uh, with that, we'll move on to agenda item 8.3. This is preliminary plat for the Australia Parcel 7.1, and Katie's here to present. Thank you, Chairman, members of the Commission. As stated, this is a preliminary plat in Estrella for parcel 7.1. It's located generally northwest of Estrella Parkway and Calistoga Drive, about 21 acres, and it's proposed for about 80 lots and 32 tracks. This um, lot was part of the um, rezoning for Montecito that came through um, last year to the Planning and Zoning Commission. It is zoned for a court home product. And this is a copy of the preliminary plat, and they, as you can see from this exhibit, they're um, mostly six-pack court home, but there's a few that have fewer than the six-pack. I did want to note one of the stipulations we would um, propose changing, stipulation number six, um, has to do with the traffic signal payment, and we just realized after the staff report was provided to commission that the zoning had approved a different timing of that payment. So um, we would modify that stipulation to adhere to the zoning that was previously approved. So it doesn't change what the payment is if or if there's not a traffic signal. It just changes when we receive that payment rather than before final plat, it would be paid when warranted. Staff has found that the um, plat meets all city codes and ordinances and recommends approval with the updated stipulation. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Any questions for staff? Would the applicant wish to address the commission? Any questions for the applicant? All right, seeing none. Uh, is there any comments from the public speakers cards on this agenda item? None? All right. Uh, with that, I will take a motion on the uh, Australia Parcel 7.1. Mr. Chairman, I move this commission approve case number 18-500-0005, subject to stipulations 1 through 5 and 7 through 10 in the staff report and the updated Stipulation six as presented by staff at this meeting. I'll second. We've been moved by Commissioner Walters, seconded by Commissioner Barnes to approve the Australia Parcel 7.1 preliminary plat. Is there any discussion? Okay. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, agenda item 8.4 this is the Cantamia Phase 3 Parcel 32 preliminary plat. Steve is going to present. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Commission members. We have a preliminary plat here for Cantamia 
And this is the overall master plan for Cantonia. Here we have Australia Parkway and uh, Willis here. Uh, Paul Cantonia is that triangular parcel here. Uh, phase one, wrapping around phase two, uh, up to phase three. And here we are right here tonight, uh, Cantonia parcel 32 kind of wrapped around here, this little U shape here. And this is aerial of overall Cantamia. Again, you can see how the development is kind of working its way around through the phases. And right here now, this is where we're gonna start seeing the future development occurring. And again, here we are, uh, parcel 32 here, right on the cusp of some addition, uh, existing development. Uh, we had a pre-flat that was approved for uh, phases uh, two and three back in 2014. And that included 326 acres, uh, 1,073 lots. It did include this parcel 32. And this is that configuration from that prior approval. And you can see it kind of maintains this U shape here. The applicant would like to change the lot widths within this subdivision. It's currently 70 feet in this approval here. They'd like to go down to 60 feet, which is permitted by the Canamia PAD. And this is the new current preliminary flat. Again, you can see how the lots here start sil silver wood, kind of wrap around. Uh, we do have an increase of four lots. We went from 37 to 41. So not a large increase with that reduction of the lot width. Uh, no changes to the street layout, a little bit of additional open space with this reconfiguration. About 11.26 acres, the 41 lots. Again, the lot size here that we're gonna see is 60 feet wide by 117 wow. feet deep. And again, given Cantamia, it's a gated community. These streets will also be private streets. And we have about two and a half acres of open space, 22% of the project area. Uh, with our staff review of this preliminary plat, we do find it is uh, consistent with the Canamia PAD. It is consistent with uh, the city subdivision regulations. As such, we are recommending approval subject to the eight stipulations in the staff report. Uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my presentation. Available for any questions. Thank you. Any questions for staff at this time? Thank you, Steve, appreciate it. Uh, applicant is not here today, tonight, right? Maybe not? No. <laughs> That's one of the residents is now in the development business. Um, all right, with that, um, I will uh, take a motion on agenda item 8.4. Chairman, I motion to approve uh, case number 18-500-00011. Second. It has been moved by uh, Commissioner Keyes, seconded by Commissioner Steiner, to approve the preliminary plat at Cantamia uh, Parcel 32. Is there a discussion? No. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. Motion carries. Thank you, Steve. Takes us uh, to the home stretch, agenda <laughs> item number nine, staff communications. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just to kind of bring you up to speed as we typically do at this point in the agenda. If you remember, we had the special meeting on September 25th to consider the Rainbow Valley PAD. Uh, thank you for your attendance and agreement to come to that meeting. Uh, that is going to be considered by the City Council on October 22nd um, in conjunction with their development agreement as well. So that's all moving forward. Additionally, just to update you on the items from the uh, regular meeting we had in September on the 12th, the El Cedro PAD uh, revision was ultimately approved by the council. The APS substation on Bullard, uh, that rezoning was likewise approved. The Pebble Creek Marketplace PAD, which uh, was inclusive of um, the, the apartment proposal there adjacent uh, to I-10, and the Citrus Farms rezoning up off of Citrus, <laughs> north of Indian School, uh, was all both likewise approved by council. And finally, the preliminary plat for Australia, parcel 9.31, and the preliminary plat for Palm Gate, which is right over here, the uh, storage facility, was also likewise approved by the council on the 24th. Um, one other little bit of information for you. 
uh, we are, Katie and I and the team are, are going to be looking at some training opportunities for the commission. If you remember, we uh, were successful in getting some um, budget authorization for you all to have some training. Uh, Katie and I and the team do some of that with you, but uh, it's probably also good to have a little bit of a fresh perspective and you're probably tired of seeing our faces a little bit as well. Um, so we're going to be looking uh, for some training opportunities for you. We would more than likely do it in conjunction with a regular meeting, maybe just have a work session either before or after a meeting and things of that nature. But we'll give you plenty of advance notice. And I'd, I'd offer out to you if you all have a particular interest of something that you would like to learn more about or if something you know, t tickles your fancy, if you will, uh, please let us know and we can consider that as we look for these training opportunities as well. Okay, so thank you. Did you have anything? Yeah, I just wanted to add a reminder that our next meeting is November 14th. You might remember that we had originally gonna, we were gonna have the meeting November 7th, but then the council meeting changed. So it is gonna be our regularly scheduled second Wednesday, November 14th. Any other comments from the commissioners? All right, with that, meeting adjourned. <laughs>